What's up, YouTube? I'm Mike. I'm in bed. My ambient is kicked in, so this must be pillow talk. And I have food in my mouth tonight, so that should make this really enjoyable for you guys. What I was thinking about talking about is a little video game called Cyberpunk 2077. Now, if you don't know, this game has been in production for like seven or eight years. There's a lot of jokes going around on the internet right now, like saying rest in peace to all the gamers who died while this game was being developed. Like, it's been obscene. The game, if you don't know, was made by the same company who made The Witcher 3, which is probably one of the best games ever made. And I've been very, very excited to play it. So you're probably wondering, hey, Mike, why are you eating gummy worms and you're yammering on this camera instead of playing the new game that just released? The reason is because I've read a ton of reviews about the massive amount of bugs and problems and poor optimization and computers run like shit and can't get above 30 frames a second and glitches and crashes to desktop. And I'm just not ready for all that. Like, I've anticipated eight years playing a game, and I didn't sign up for that. I'm not going to spend $60 to fucking deal with crashes to desktop. Like, this is insane. Like, what have they been doing for eight years? I'm reading the textures are not even that good. I'm reading that it looks like it was a game that was made seven years ago, and it just now came out. I hope to all that is holy and unholy, that that's some haters just trying to review bomb this game into oblivion. I hope that I have not sat here and twiddled my thumbs, literally. I've done nothing. I've been so obsessed with this game. I just sit in this house and twiddle my thumbs, waiting, just counting the seconds until Cyberpunk 2077 hit. And then right when I was going to buy it, all my hopes and dreams were dashed by hateful comments in the review section saying that the game, one guy said his dead dog runs better than this game. <laughs> like that's what we're dealing with here. And you know some of it's BS. Right, because there's infinitely more people who are saying, "Oh my God, they did it again! They nailed it! This game is awesome." But, but aside from either the you know the the people who drank the Kool Aid on either side, some legitimate some legitimate outlets have published that there's a lot of bugs in this game. Now these bugs are supposed to be addressed in the day one patch. Fucking day one patch, really? You just delayed the game. <laughs> it was supposed to come out in November, and you delayed it. Presumably to fix shit. So why do we need a day one patch? Don't you think you should just... I mean, at this point, it's been eight years. Like, what's another delay? <laughs> Delayed indefinitely. You know, I think people had gotten to the point where they, they, were, they believed it was a myth anyway. So, I mean, what's another day? If they delayed it one more day, could they have installed their own day one patch? And then not have burdened everybody to download the game and then fucking turn around and download the one day patch, the day one patch. What kind of what kind of ass hattery is that? You know? Sixty dollars. Congratulations. Here's your game. Now you gotta go wait to fix it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm being a dick intentionally because I'm loaded on sleeping pills, but you know. There's a lot of truth in what I'm saying here though. It's disappointing. And I hope that. I've just been taken, taken on a ride from some people who are trying to poke some fun in an otherwise uh, life-altering game. I actually read just recently. I was going to buy this game for both of my kids. I've got a 14-year-old and a 9-year-old. I've got three kids, but those are the two boys. And I had decided, told my wife, I think I'm going to buy this game for, the, for my boys. We're going to play it together. And in the first, like, two minutes of reading about this, I find out that during during um, uh, character creation, you can control the size of your penis. And if you're a female character, you can control the size of your breasts. 
which seems a little bit unfair when you really think about it. Like, why is it that the male character can control the size of his penis, presumably making it very small or very, very big? I'm not sure how many people are going to run, like, run around the game with a, a micro penis. But don't you think the ladies on the other side should be able to accommodate their vaginas for this varying degree of genital size that we're going to have in the game? You know, that seems dangerous. If, if the female character has one static vagina size and men can grow their penises to gargantuan you know, dimensions, I mean, I don't know, guys. That sounds, um, that sounds bad for the female characters. I don't think they thought that one through well. You know, like how stereotypically masculine. Oh, you can change your boob size and I'll have a big dick, but never mind your vagina. <laughs> Or maybe they're all small and tight, like we like it, you know? That's just what they assumed that the girls would want, too. I'm not sure that's the thing, you know? You ever notice how, like, when you're younger, you get with a girl and you think, see, I'm about to go off. So if if you're sensitive to sex talk, you can just turn this off right now. But you ever notice how, like, when you were a young man, you know, you thought, like, getting with, a like, a really tight girl was the thing you wanted? You know, guys used to talk about it a lot. You know, girls talk about like, how tight they were. I don't know, man. I feel like, and maybe it just goes with age. I feel like you you kind of want to get with a girl who's uh, who's grown enough, you know, in herself that uh, she can kind of can accommodate you without, you know, creating a scenario whereby. You struggle to have any staying power, you know. Because that's the thing. Like t- tight pussy's great and all, but it doesn't do much for your ego if it only lasts thirty seconds. <laughs> like it's kind of, it's kind of like there's a point where it's too good, you know. Like you got to get with a girl's like <laughs> in her late twenties, early thirties. You know, she's been around the block a little bit. She's had a baby. You know, that's a good one. Or at least it's your girl you've had since y'all were in your teens or twenties, and you've you know, you've loosened it up a little bit, you know, and then, then it kind of, you know, pussy as it ages, you know, it can kind of, kind of like a baseball glove, you know what I mean? Like you go to the store, you get that brand new baseball glove, you're excited about it, you cram your hand in it, and it, it's like choking the blood out of your hand, you know, and then you take it home, and uh, you hit it with the glove oleum, you know, you lube it up, and you you put, you put a ball in it, and you, you know, if you're like my dad, he used to buy a new glove like in the winter, end of the season, and then he would lo- he would saturate it. He would just lube it up with glove oleum, and he'd put a baseball in it, and then he would tape the glove around the baseball, and then he would just put it in the top of the closet. And I guess like over the fall season, you know, the glove would soak up all that oil and get real pliable, and it would like kind of mold its shape to the to the ball. And then in the spring, when he'd come and wrap his glove, you know, he was convinced that it was just like it was tailor made for him. And that's what you got to do with the pussy, unfortunately. Is <laughs> you know, you gotta you gotta mold it to your specifications. And when you get that dialed in, that's when you're gonna hit your stride sexually with your wife. That's when you're gonna really find out, you know, just how good this can be. Before that, it's just, uh, you know, it's just uh, it's like beta testing, you know? It's like you're still you're still dialing it in. You're still checking all the tolerances and the clearances and, and uh, getting all the right specifications before you roll this thing out to the final, to the final customer base. You know? Hey, babe, what do you think about that? Do you, do you feel like we have thoroughly um, acclimated your vagina to sex in this house? Yes. Do you feel like we have it pretty dialed in? Yes. That's great. It would be unfortunate if we had made it too big, you know? And then and then that wouldn't be good for you or me, probably. You're right. Do you think we found... you think we hit the sweet spot? Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious from a, to know from a woman who, who owns a, a vagina... Due to the fact that, uh, you know, 
erections are not all created equal. Even with the same man, you know, you got you got strong days and you got days where, you know, he's not having his A game. <laughs> Do you feel like the that your fit is capable to adjusting to those those gradations of rigidity, or is it like some days you just don't <laughs> you're out of luck and you're not really getting what you're looking for? You think it adjusts? Mm -hmm. So if I'm having a, like a like a C game, you can come down to my level. You can shrink down to my level. But if I bring the A game, like tonight when I brought the A game, then you can you can grow to accommodate that, or just do a whole lot of wincing and hollering. <laughs> One of the two, right? Mm -hmm. Right on. Well, there you have it, fellas. Um. Somehow I started with uh, Cyberpunk 2077 and got on how vaginas and baseball gloves are very similar. So you see, when you dial in, tune in to Pillow Talk, you just never know what you're going to get. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. It is clearly time for me to go to bed before I embarrass myself any further. So I uh, will see you on the next video. And if you would kindly thumb this one up and write me some funny comments in the comment section below, that really helps the algorithm. Much appreciated. Later.